All right, so I've closed my expression editor. Here's my tail control. The only things that I'm using are translate X and Y, so I can take the rest of these, right click and lock and hide selected. Perfect. My tail control is all done. So at this point, if I turn the joints off completely, I have all of the controls that I need. I can move things around. Tail control is getting lost there. I will take the tail group and make it another child of the root control curve. So now I can take this whole thing. I can move it around. I can give it a little jiggle. That's a jiggle down. There's a jiggle up, up here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I can have the tail go all crazy. And I can have my ears wiggle. Work even better if I select two of them at a time. Yeah, look at that. So I've got a lot of controls. The only thing that I don't really have right now is a way to scale the rig up or down so I can make it bigger or smaller. And for that, I am going to make one final control called a placement control. And I'm going to do just a tiny bit of cleanup in my scene. Right now, for example, I can see that I've got this root joint just sitting here, not being in a group. And that's a little bit awkward because as we've seen, groups are incredibly useful. So I'm going to make a group node here that I am going to call my skeleton group. And then I've got this root group that starts off the entire control curve chain. I'm going to nest that inside a group too and we'll call this one my controls group. These two groups are really useful if you're ever dealing with a skeleton that has multiple chains or controls that also do not come to a single point. So it's really good to start grouping within groups within groups. The final control I'm going to make, I will make a circle. And I'm going to leave it right at the ball's feet. I'll scale it up a little bit and in the make node, I might give it a few more sections. Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's do 24. That's enough that I can take a few of these points. Maybe we'll turn on a little bit of soft select. Ooh, fancy. And now I can bring this into a point. I think that's a little big. And now I've got a nice little arrow that points in the direction that the ball is moving. I'm going to go ahead and freeze transformations on this. This control right here is called a placement control. If your character had a name, you would put that name here. So it would be name placement control. My ball sadly is nameless. So sad. But that's okay. I can still have a placement control for it. Now these placement controls, it's really important that all of their attributes are clean. So mine are, I am going to go ahead and delete my history here as well. In order to activate the placement control, I'm going to take my control group and make it a child of placement. And then I'm going to take my skeleton group and make that a child of placement too. And now the placement group is all done. If I click on the placement control and I scale it, you'll see that now I can have a gigantic ball with ears and a tail. If I shrink it down, now I can have a teensy ball with ears and a tail. I'll reset that back to one and it resets to normal. I can also take this and use it to rotate. So that frees me up to rotate all of the controls without needing that root control. And of course, I can move the root control without moving the placement. So I've got options here. I've got some flexibility. Next, because I've still got two items here, I would rather have any character exist as a single entity in the outliner. So I'm going to take 
the ball with tail geometry and the placement control, and I'll group them together into one character group. And again, if your character had a name, you would use that instead of character, but my ball with ears and a tail is sadly nameless. So sad. Okay, we are 90% of the way done, and look at how complicated this looks. Aren't you proud of yourselves for doing all of this? The last thing I want to do is throw one more layer of protection into my rig. We've talked about this a couple of times, but anytime you give something to an animator, there's a reasonable chance that they're going to break it. So right now, if I move my tail control, that moves great. But if my animator selects the tail control group, that also moves, and that could just move my tail control totally out of place. So I've put in all of these really useful group nodes, but I don't want anybody to have access to them. I'll come up here to my select by name. If you don't see select by name, and you might not, it's this little flag right here. When I click that, it opens up this lovely window. It generally starts as absolute transform, which looks like this, but if you click on the little icon, you can switch it over to select by name. I'm going to type in asterisk grp, asterisk. The asterisk acts as a wild card, so if I've got anything in front of the grp, that will include in the selection, and if I've got anything after the grp, that will also be included. But when I press enter, this is going to select all of my group nodes without selecting any of the things inside the group nodes. How nice is that? Now I can just take all of the channels on all of my group nodes, right click, and lock and hide selected, and now all of that very precious, very delicate group node data is protected from those horrible animators that just want to wreck it. Oh, I feel so safe and happy and secure now. That's great. So in this video, we discussed making a placement control, cleaning up the outliner, and protecting all of our very delicate, delicate groups. There's just a little bit more to do, so I've got one or two videos left. Hang in there, you are almost done.